Pub Battles, Waterloo. This time, I'm having Wellington's plans be to have the baggage deploy early and support the front lines. Now hopefully hold the French right at the line. The initial French assault has begun. Sixth Corps has a successful attack, drives Alton back. Oh man, in the center here, half of O'Reilly's attack was totally obliterated. The other half was very successful. Now there's an open line to the baggage. Durland's Lancers overrun the artillery. Here Durland completely takes the right. Clinton is driven out of Papalo, La Haye, pushes back a few units. The only saving grace is they have the baggage deployed and they should be able to re recover. This has been an extremely successful French opening. We'll see if Wellington recovered in the early afternoon. The Prussian 4th Corps continues on and the Prussian, rather than just have his HQ and everyone in, in reserve, has placed them out on the map to look threatening. Napoleon sends the Young Guard to face the Prussians, as he did historically, at least elements of, and the 4th Corps French Cav runs right into Bulow's dragoons in column. Uxbridge and the British heavies tried to save the bags, and though they destroy, of course, the, the French dragoons that were there, they get driven off by Jerome's division. Now, Picton attacks, but he can't actually resolve until the movement phase, so if it were only him, this would not be enough. The cuirassiers can charge, which they did, and the British Guard infantry charges. This doesn't count as a, it's a flanking attack because we're resolving this as a charge attack. We need to resolve it in the movement phase. The guards save the bags for the moment, though they themselves are somewhat disorganized. Combat in the early afternoon has gotten really intense. Over here on the French left, the Super V's cab was driven back, but now they've exposed that baggage. There's been a maelstrom of combat. They have lost five divisions, the French have, in the center, and the British have lost three. This has been just an insane amount of battle, but the baggage are safe for now. On the right, this looks pretty intense. The bags are set up. Clinton could recover, but he needs to be up front in the fight. Versus the Prussians, the Dragoons simply run off, not wanting to fight in column. There was, con there w there was combat, but it didn't amount to anything. Mid-afternoon. Things continue to heat up. All the British artillery has been overrun. Over here on the extreme French left, Lobau's Sixth Corps almost reaches the baggage train, driving off the garrison troops. Kellerman's cuirassiers drive off and some militia troops, which end up running into the heavy cav. Over here, Kellerman's cuirassiers drive off the other guards around the baggage train, who in turn run into the British Guard cavalry. Picton's troops stabilize the situation. Over here on the French right, what remained of the British troops over here were completely destroyed by Durland's unstoppable First Corps. I'll be very curious to see if Blucher can, troops can come in and restore the side of the battle. Here we are, late afternoon, and the Prussian 4th Corps, which came in on the beginning of the game on turn 1 at noon, and they're just now deploying and getting ready for combat. The British Guard Cavalry, still kind of messed up from being run through by the retreating, by Vink's troops retreating, hear the call and, and drive, attempt to drive off Lobau's corps. Success, but they're driven back also. The rest of the cavalry does what it can do to defend the unpacked baggage. Lobau attacks the bags, but they cannot charge. So the best they can do is expose the bags for next turn. All right, very late afternoon. Prussians have engaged with the Durland's First Corps. Durland's First Corps is driving hard for the bags. Napoleon has committed the guard to drive at the central bags. Now this is close. They are in contact with the bags, but this is a combat phase. If the British Guard can turn around and drive them off, they will be saved. The critical thing to note is at this point, the British Army will break if it loses one more infantry unit. Here are the Guard's Lancers attacking the Brunswickers. They run them down. The British Army breaks. It has been heavy fighting. They were so close to the bags all game, but it was really hard to actually come into contact with the bags. The entire French 2nd Corps is nearly destroyed. Bachelot here is spent, they have their artillery and their unpacked bags, but they've lost 5 divisions. So the French have lost a total of 5 
infantry divisions, but they're a much larger army and they can, and that doesn't break them. The British have lost six blocks, that does break them. So here we are, late afternoon, turn four, French victory at Waterloo. It was accomplished by the guard, the lancers and the old guard in combined attack. Who could withstand them? I have to add that this was incredibly intense combat. These were all the dead, the glorious dead. I knew this would be bloody when I unpacked bags right up by the front line. There was no reason to hold back, no reason to save. There's no falling back. It was all going to be on the line right there. This was the classic knife fight in a telephone booth, and it was exactly that. This represents over 50,000 casualties in a little over four hours. Think about it. Over 50,000 casualties were caused at Gettysburg over three days of intense fighting the same casualties in four hours. There was no resting here. Every turn, everything possible was engaged. <laughs> this was about as intense a game as I've ever played. 